pineal gland reduces endorphins, making you feel happy. And if the tea blocks that, then you're sort of restless. You don't want to. You can't sort of sit and be happy. You need to be busy. Great thing to make people work, isn't it? You know, yeah, when you work and you are happy, you're busy, you're happy, it's, it's good. It's good to be busy and happy, but if you knew what you were serving, who you were helping, who you were aiding, and what their intentions are, basically, just to enjoy themselves at the benefits of other people's toil, then perhaps you wouldn't be so happy doing it. So it'll be, it's good to be busy, it's good to be good, busy, but it's also good to, to be the one that benefits from your busyness. We should help others, we should be kind to others, you know, but not necessarily be their slaves. Or even if you can't so call it slaves because you get paid, but then, let's face it, all your money goes on, you know, what you need. Plenty of taxes involved. So, you know, you can say you're getting paid for it, but are you profiting? In India, they would say no. And when they talk about profit, they talk about after all expenses. They're not so dumb. Right, so, off on a tangent again. Yes, back in the 70s, the powers that be would have known for sure what was going to happen doesn't take a mastermind to work out that if the population of the hum of the planet today is three billion in one generation so between 20 and 30 years population is going to double and they probably could have seen with a population of three billion that life wasn't probably as comfortable and spacious as it had been perhaps just 20 or 30 years previous to that and uh, <clears throat> that's kind of generation span is also noticeable in people's minds as they reach sort of age 35 40 they'll be able to remember how things were and therefore see what's happened in between and um, it's perhaps only becoming so noticeable to most of us dumbasses eating too much bread when the population had then doubled and was six billion <laughs> back what 15 years ago now I don't know, 10 years ago. So it's this. So it's happened and now it's clear to us. But it would have been quite clear to them and the powers of be back then. Now, what's happened since then, at least in the Western world, is we've been liberated. It's kind of been a a do what you want world. Barely any, barely any restrictions on the, on life. But then, what's happened is, the powers that be have sort of moved towards more distant countries to use that workforce and those resources so then we've seen what do they call them the brick countries brazil china india and the others <laughs> korea who's are then maybe that's part of brazil anyway Countries like that have soared and they've been making all the stuff that feeds the consumerism. 
and we in the Western world, oh, we've just been having so much fun consuming these things and sitting in front of them. And that was quite nice of them, wasn't it? That was nice of the uh, powers that be to uh, have given us all that. Um, you know, they've given us a few other things as well, like um, plenty of chemicals in our food and drink. Um, they've instructed us as well, you know, brush your teeth twice a day. Toothpaste, a thousand parts per million of fluoride in it. Ram that into your gums. Don't swallow it. Gums will absorb plenty. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that was a big thing in education. Brush your teeth twice a day. Brush your teeth twice a day is all you have to do. <laughs> oh, of course, I could brush your teeth out. I do brush my teeth without toothpaste and the white rainwater. And they're not bad. Five months now. Anyway, um, they're not great. But they're not, they never were great. I think that, in a way, I'm not sure, anyway. It's not been long enough. I have to wait and see. Um, yeah, and they've given us plenty of chemicals in our foods. Aspartame, that's a nice one. Thanks for that. Um, I mean, it was all sort of profit based in a sense, I suppose, but you know, it's a weird thing about the chemical industry, isn't it? I'm assuming that chemicals must come from a natural source. Um, and be extracted. Otherwise, how would they make them? Then? But you know, aspartame is made from the excrement of a certain bacteria. Well, I suppose you'd call it natural. So bacteria shit in your Robinson's fruit drink. In your Coke Zero. Um, yeah, it's quite common. Look out for that one. There's another one they use beginning with AS. I'm not sure if that's quite as bad. But, um, so they've been really nice to us and given us TV and everything, but I think this might, there's an understanding. That that has mainly been as another aid to dumb the humans. And, and if you look at some of the television programs, oh, I mean, I don't know how people watch them. Just, uh, there's only a couple of things I like to watch. I don't have a TV, I'll just watch it later on iPlayer, which I'm allowed to do. Anyway, so yeah, TV is dumbing us. It's hypnotizing. That's the hypnotizing aspect, and the news. Oh, oh, the news these days is so poor. It really is atrocious, and um, I've heard it's in one of the predictions that the journalists are going to start getting a bit annoyed with the ridiculousness of the news reporting. And uh, hopefully that will be soon, and they can they can rebel and start to get the word out. They're yeah, being dumbed down, totally dumbed down, treated as idiots, and um, therefore we start to believe that you are an idiot. And then if all you put into your head is idiotic things, eventually, <laughs> well. Eventually you're going to you know, think like that. It's going to be hard for you to think otherwise. And perhaps if if you are so 
so conformed, when the time comes perhaps it will just be too much to take, too much of a shock to the system. And chemtrails. It's scary to me. You know, when I was at school, I remember our teacher saying the oil would run out in the year 2000, it would be like the end of the world. But ever since then, the focus has been on resources. <laughs> so like oil, which really is a luxury, to water, which you think was a given, but it's becoming more and more of a luxury, and especially <laughs> clean water, the crap that comes out of our taps is a luxury. And now it's air, the air we breathe. I mean, I don't live in a big city, and I'm very glad of that, because I don't, when I've visited cities, I really don't like the air quality. It's very poor. Wouldn't want to do any exercise in that sort of air quality. And um, now chemtrails, so can't avoid that. You know, is this a double whammy for the government? Or the, so I won't say the government because they're really just puppets for the powers that be. They spray the chemtrails, I, my current understanding is to um, mask the effects of global warming. Maybe it's also mark, marking the... Uh, <laughs> Um, masking the oncoming of Nibiru. <laughs> That's another one, one or the other. Maybe it's both. <laughs> um, but yeah, since 2009, I think in this country when they've really been laying it on, it's definitely affected our weather and our summers. Very poor summers, mild winters, but. I think, you know, the worrying thing is what they're spraying up there, minute particles of aluminium, is, of course, coming back down to ground. Or landing in the sea and poisoning the sea and therefore the fish. Um, but landing on, on the earth, on the ground, getting into crops, but also, you know, we're going to be inhaling it at some point. And the more we inhale, the more we consume in our food. There's another weakening of the immune system. Another devolving of the human species. Our immune system is a fantastic thing something we should really look after instead of being so worried about cleanliness and living in a clean house fucking bleach everywhere and other detergents other bacteria killing things everywhere spreading it all on the surfaces it's going to get into your body bits of it you know, it's gonna, you're going to inhale some as you're using it. It's not good for your immune system either. So rather than thinking, Oh, I've got to be clean. Blah, 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 think about your immune system. Your immune system doesn't like all that stuff. Your immune system likes mud. Your immune system would like you to eat a worm. That's my belief and my present understanding. I ate a worm not so long ago. It was my second. It tasted like shit. But really gave me a, oh, you know, spur of energy. It's really cool. I recommend it. I had no ill effects from it whatsoever. Word of caution, though. It does seem to take a little time to swallow. It might be quite good to have a drink to wash it down. And give it a good chew. It does taste off. You know, yeah, it's alright. Good. 
Um, yeah, another tip for anyone thinking this impending dooms mean we're going to be foraging for food. Um, you can eat grass, and not eat it, chew it, chew it, swallow the uh, juices, chew it for ages if you want, get more and more out of it, and then spit it out. Um, and mushrooms are going to be a key thing. You need to find out which mushrooms they can eat. Sort of um, nibbled some fungus not so long ago. Some parts of it were really nice, really nice. But some parts of it were <laughs> worryingly not nice. Because I've nibbled a few mushrooms before, so I'm kind of familiar with a couple of the uh, tastes and stomach aches that I may have had from it. Anyway, more of that knowledge is needed. And this thing that bothers me, you know, humans losing their skills, um, you know, making your own clothes is a very good skill. And um, in the new world, there are not going to be many people who know how to do it, so we're going to have to sort of restart some of these learning processes. And I think...